Hey, yeah, hi, and welcome to Your Mom Tries, um, where I'm just the average mom and I try things. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about my recent try where I went and tried cosplay for the first time at a Renaissance fair, hence my beautiful crown. I'm just not quite ready to let go of it yet. Um, I'm going to tell you all about that in this upcoming video, so stay tuned. Yeah, so I'm Heidi with Your Mom Tries, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about my experience of trying out cosplay at a Renaissance Festival. I've been to a Renaissance Festival. It was a different one here in Utah, and probably, I don't know, eight years ago. Um, I've never dressed up for a Renaissance Festival or really like any type of that before. Maybe a little bit of Halloween here and there, but I've never cosplayed. I've never gotten into that whole renaissance festival garb so I thought it would be fun to try so my idea was I wanted to be a fairy princess I said the words fairy princess to my family a gazillion times going around saying I'm gonna be a fairy princess I was very excited to try this out um, really stepping out of my comfort zone. I dress normally, black t-shirt, maybe leggings, um, tank top, leggings, pretty much every day. I dress very informally, very casually. I don't want to stick out in my normal day-to-day. -day. I have very limited dressy type clothes um, and I own zero costumes. So this was something very new for me. Also because of limited funds and just the wanting to keep this more economic but also environmentally friendly, um, I wanted to go thrifting for the majority of my costume items for being a fairy princess. I, along with my kid, went to a couple thrift stores and I found a wonderful dress, pretty, um, um, inexpensive dress um, with my size. It's sometimes hard to shop at thrift stores and finding things, but I was excited. I found it um, very colorful, um, knew I could updo it in such a way that I could feel like my, you guessed it, fairy princess. At that same thrift store, I actually found the belt. Um, that you can see in the pictures and videos here. Really excited, it was mostly elastic, but then it had like um, really cool fastener on the front with that metal piece. Um, so I felt um, that would be a good use instead of having to go and buy like a corset or something else that would kind of cinch me in in the middle. Um, so I really liked that. I really liked finding that belt. It was the best find. So after I purchased the dress, the belt, I knew I had boots, I knew I had some necklaces, I needed to do something with my hair. I thought about cool braids, but I really wanted to um, make a flower crown. So I went to a dollar store and I bought just a simple headband. They also had silk flowers um, there, really cheap. Since I already had the dress, I knew what colors to match and so I brought it home and I made my fairy princess crown. It's made with wire and glue and I have a little bit of footage. We can run through that. Okay, so for the flower crowns, I just got flowers. I separated some of the larger ones to make them smaller, bunched them up together, put them on the headband and then wired them on with a thin wire. I used a little bit of hot glue as well to get them secure. Here's the one I made for my child. I used the same process where I bunched them together and wired them onto the headband and here's the finished product.
The next part was the day of, getting ready. I thought I would maybe just get my hair braided at the Ren Fair, so I just um, brushed it and um, put it in a ponytail. That ended up not happening, but I was okay with it not being braided because I still had my crown, which was fantastic. And I also did my makeup a little more than I usually do. I'm a pretty plain makeup person. This is actually a lot of makeup for me. So, um, but that day I wanted to feel special. So I put on even more makeup, added some purples and things. And so I felt fantastic. So next it was time to drive down. It's about a um, 30, 40 minute drive from my house down to the Utah Renaissance Fair. And their website is utahrenfair.org. By the time we got through the line and gained entry into the fair, it was time for us to um, book it over to the equestrian area so we could watch the vaulting performance. The vaulting group is Technique Equestrian Vaulting Club. And the sport itself combines dance and gymnastics and horseback riding and um, directing or lunging the horse um, into a rhythm so the performers can get up and down and do amazing feats of acrobats and dance and strike poses. It was fantastic. Vaulting reaches back into ancient Rome. I learned about where um, fighters would try to find balance on their horses during combat. And since then, it has um, developed into an international sport. And really cool, really fantastic. My child really wanted to try out axe throwing. They have never done it before. They did a fantastic job. So here's some footage of us trying out our hand at axe throwing. After axe throwing, we walked around some more and we were approached by a very glittery fairy who informed us that she was a spring fairy and kind of dying in the heat. It was a very hot day. It was very cute to see all of the attendees and the performers just really living it up, um, not being abashed by who they are and what they love. You can tell so many people spent a lot of time, effort, hand making or curating um, bits for their, their costuming piece and really taking a lot of pride into the handicraft and work that went into that. I loved it. Some people were um, talking in old speak, some were not. Um, I never felt out of place or out of step with um, anyone that I was there. Um, I loved being a fairy princess and walking around and, and frolicking and doing all the amazing things. After talking to the fairy, we went and did um, archery. So again, my child wanted um, to try their hand at archery. We both have done it a little bit before, just here and there, kind of maybe at fairs or camps or things like that. So we had a lot of fun. Um, I like to think that I'm pretty good, especially at Wii Sports Archery. The next activity we wanted to do was the Maypole. So in the middle of the Utah Ren Fair grounds was a giant kind of like flagpole erected with streaming ribbons coming down to it um, from it, very colorful ribbons coming down from it. Because we wanted to do the Maypole so badly, every member of the group I was with wanted to do it. I arrived early. I saw who was in charge of doing the Maypole, kind of asked them, how do you choose people? What should we do? And kind of got a little bit of history. The people here at the Utah Ren Fair that do, do the Maypole, that's the only one they do, but they're very proud of that tradition and they curate um, the ribbons. Um, they have a really good instruction board and the music for how to do it. Now I could see that it was going to be very popular. There were already some people gathering around about 20 minutes before we were supposed to start. Me being kind of that giver, kind of wanting to be in the background, um, make space for other people, but not take up space myself. 
I was thinking I was not going to do it. However, if I'm honest with myself, I really wanted to do it. My biggest hesitation with doing it is I didn't want to take a spot from a kid or from somebody else. But I also am just a little bit more cautious, afraid, anxious about people looking at me, um, being a little bit larger, um, older than maybe the person next to me. So I didn't want to be looked at in, in that kind of negative light. Um, however, when I had those thoughts running through my head, I kind of knew, oh, I want to do it. And that's what this whole channel is about, is trying new things and stepping out of that comfort zone and not letting that um, anxiety and fear run my life. So I stepped up and I let them know I wanted to be chosen. And if they said, you know, it's too full when they got to me, I was going to graciously step away. But I was counted and I got to do it. And I know if I hadn't stepped up to do it, I would have just sat there the whole time and kind of been anxious and regretting that choice not to do it. So I'm proud of myself for saying, hey, I have just as much right as anybody else to be here. Um, they had other activities that the um, littles could do. You kind of did need to be a little bit older to understand the rhythm, um, the pattern and be able to hold the ribbon, um, to be able to go over and under um, people throughout the, the dancing of the unwinding of the maypole. So I deserve to be there just as much as everybody else. And out our day, we went and saw the jousting performance. So it's the Charlie Andrews and the Knights of Mayhem joust. Real live action, full on joust. I have seen them before. Like I mentioned, I have gone to a Ren Fair before um, many, many, many years ago. And I was blown away by full contact jousting. Um, I watched and followed them on social media for a while. And I know that can be a little bit controversial with, you know, your, it's um, very impactful, you know, it's dangerous. And not only that, it could be dangerous for the horses, but um, I still wanted to watch. And so I did, and it um, was very entertained by the, by the Knights and still very Im impressed. I mean, honestly, even just being in full armor um, in a very hot day is pretty impressive. So overall, would I recommend Ren Fair and cost, um, cosplay at the Ren Fair? Absolutely. I think me, even as a novice person who didn't spend all year or decades um, getting my costume ready, I spent about a month and about $20 getting my costume ready, including my wonderful fairy princess crown um ready I think it was worth it I think why not when else would I get to wear such a um, magnificent crown and beautiful colors and feel a part of something um be able to kind of geek out with all of the other individuals I highly recommend it would do again all right, well, thanks for watching this video and um, coming along with this try of cosplay um, with me. And I look forward to seeing you when I try my next thing. And remember, all tries are good tries. <laughs>